Uh, Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Um, the first thing I have here tonight is um, I have a site called um, Twitter at Lee Morgan 113, and I'm discussing city issues with residents and people outside the city. And I hope people would access that and uh, start discussing what their opinions are about the city. Um, Mr. Spragula came up and uh, said a couple things, and you know, I, I listen and uh, talked about sharpening a pencil, I think it's time to break the pencil. Um, and you know, talking about a tax revolt in the city is really, I find that to be comical. And not that I don't find that Mr. Spraglia's statements are incorrect, just that sheep don't revolt. And this city has been in trouble for 20 some plus years. And the people who vote have gone and continually backed failed plans and listened to misinformation, because I'm not going to say anybody's a liar, because I think that's a little harsh. But I think they've listened to misinformation for over two decades. And when, when people outside this area in other states and in other countries are laughing, and we're the laughing stock of everywhere you can imagine, I mean, to go outside the city and tell them you're a Scrantonian, they look at you like you're out of your mind. And at one time when I used to go outside the city in the 70s when I was much younger in early 80s, you know, they might have made a comment about the amount of prostitution that was here at one time when the mines were going. But now they're wondering what's going on with the people in this city. And, you know, for generations of Scrantonians for over 80 years to watch the decline of a city and their children and their grandchildren living, leaving the area. The only recommendation at this point that I give to Scrantonians is, if you have any money, give it to your children and send them out of here. Because we've listened to all these stories for all these decades. And it's just pathetic that people tell you that their whole family's gone. And I have a son that's going to graduate from college in a year. He's leaving. And I've come to this podium for over 20 years and talked about the issues that this consultant is bringing up now. These aren't secrets. These are things that have been known to the community or anybody in the community who wanted to know what was going on here. And the sad part is we've allowed the union leaders to pick our mayoral candidates and, and council candidates and go out and campaign for them and put them in these seats. That's my opinion. And it's a pathetic place we're at. And we just have to ask, as we raise fees and we talks about, talk about taxation, walk around this city and see the amount of empty properties in this city. And then look at all the, all the projects. Look at, if this is not a shot at the council and not a shot at the mayor, but where is this plan? Where is this grand plan that these residents should come and back to bring a renaissance to this city? The first council meeting we had, we tried to revive the North Scranton project after millions of dollars were spent there. But what about all the residents in the city? I mean, we have a state representative who sued one of his constituents because he tripped over his constituent sidewalk. We have very serious infrastructure problems, not to highlight the water main that's broken. This city has struggled for decades, and we keep wa waltzing around and around an issue. The truth of the matter is that this problem is just so big that the only person that can solve this problem are the people who started it. Some of them are in Washington when they stopped doing federal revenue sharing. The other ones are in Harrisburg that created Act 47. And personally speaking for myself, I don't think that the former mayor challenged the unions on his own. The state wanted to smash those unions because all across this commonwealth their pension plans are underwater, not just here, but everywhere. And the truth should be told that, look at bringing the minimum wage up from $10 an hour isn't going to solve any of the problems. Because what's happened to America as a young man who grew up in the 60s and the 70s is I've watched this country fall into poverty. Johnson's great plan for Appalachia to lift it out of poverty, this whole country's gone into poverty. 
Our standard of living has been very seriously compromised, and for one reason. We've created a political class of politicians who create laws and have no idea what they're doing and have no concern for it because they're backed by billionaires and multimillionaires. And the average person on the street, he doesn't do $500 or $1,000 dinner, dinner plate uh, things for politicians. The ordinary people in this country have nothing left. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Is there anyone else who wishes 